Hello everybody, I'm so happy to see you in my tutorial. As you know, data science is getting very popular in the job market. And at the same time, without data visualization, data science is no sense. So because of this, I dedicated my time on creating a course about one of the top Python libraries for data visualization, which is Matplotlib. So in this course, you're going to be learning about Matplotlib in details. Let's get started with first asking some questions and answering it. So first of all, what is Matplotlib itself? So Matplotlib is one of the most popular Python packages used for data visualization. So then we have Matplotlib was created by John D. Hunter in 2003. So it was first released in 2003. And then Matplotlib is open source and we can use it freely. Matplotlib is mostly written in Python. A few segments are written in C, Objective-C, and JavaScript for platform compatibility. So then the current version of library is 3.1.3. However, in website, it is written 3.3.3. .3. So three streaks. And why you need to learn Matplotlib? Because there should be reason before learning something again, yeah? Because of this, I'm going to be explaining you one of the top reasons why you need to learn Matplotlib. Here, in this picture, as you can see, there are several Python's top libraries for data science or machine learning and deep learning. So this one is scikit-learn and this one is TensorFlow. One of them deals with machine learning, another one deals with deep learning. In order to manipulate data and visualize and make models on that visualization, you need to learn Pandas and Matplotlib. So in our previous video, we put foundation to our data science with NumPy. So NumPy is the basis of everything. And now we are moving to Matplotlib, which puts the foundation of data visualization. So this is the reason why you need to learn Matplotlib. And then we're gonna be moving into Pandas, which deals with data manipulation. So we manipulate data and visualize, and at the end, we're gonna be making prediction models with scikit-learn or TensorFlow, okay? So this is the aim, why you need to learn Matplotlib. It is one of the chain of data science or machine learning and deep learning. So then, interestingly, as every top Python library has got its own official website, Matplotlib also has got its own. So let's get started with opening it. So it is loading. And here it is. It is much clearer and in detailed examples. So here are documentation, installation, examples, tutorials. So here is one of the examples. For example, you can also come here. There are lots of things in detail and you can learn many of them. So as you can see, there are lots of them. Animations, 3D and pictures and etc. So depending on your choice, you can choose it from this content here. As you can see, Pyblo shape collection, animation, event handling, front page, 3D plotting, and ticks and pines, widgets, and etc. So this is very useful website for those who want to learn Matplotlib in depth. So this is the version. The latest version is 3.3.3. Double threes, luckily. We have got lucky. So in the next tutorial, we're going to be learning how to install this Matplotlib library on our IDEs. So see you on the next tutorial. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial and have a nice day. Hello, everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how to install Matplotlib on our IDEs. So as long as I'm using Jupyter Notebook, I'm going to be starting to show you how to install Matplotlib in Jupyter Notebook. Then if you are using PyCharm, then I'm also going to be showing you how to install Matplotlib on them. However, I highly recommend you to use Jupyter Notebook as long as data science is very popular with Jupyter Notebook on, and Colab rather than PyCharm or Visual Studio Code. So let's get started with Jupyter Notebook. Interestingly, Matplotlib and some of the other top Python libraries are pre-installed in Jupyter Notebook. So which means 
you don't need to install this matplotlib on Jupyter Notebook if you have installed Anaconda, okay? Now, if you are coming across any problem, maybe while you are importing matplotlib, you may come across a problem. Because of this, I'm going to be now showing you how to install matplotlib. So, first of all, let's get started with finding the anaconda file, then anaconda prompt. Here it is, anaconda prompt, and then it opens to our working system. Now, I'm going to be using conda, conda install. So, whenever you want to install anything, you just need to write this conda install and the name of it. For example, matplotlib. As long as I have already installed or matplotlib has been pre-installed on my Anaconda distribution, I'm not going to be pressing enter. And if you press enter, it's going to be installing it for you. So this is it. And if you come across to any problem, then don't just give up. Coding is about solving problems, okay? Whenever, not only coding, whenever you learn something new, you come across a problem. So you need to solve that problems. And this indicates that you are taking actions and you are working. Google is the best friend of coders, okay? No one is perfect. No one knows all the things in coding. Everyone asks questions from Google constantly. So you just need to ask proper questions that you can get answers. So now I'm going to be moving into PyCharm. So if you are using PyCharm, again, I repeat, you shouldn't use this one because data science is much more popular and much more better to apply with Jupyter Notebook. However, I'm going to be showing you how to install Matplotlib on Jupyter Notebook too. So go to the setting from file and then there is project you see this is project and inside the project inside the project there is project interpreter in this file there are all of the packages or python libraries that are installed on your ide so now i'm going to be going to add install which is plus sign and here are all the libraries that you can download and install on your ide these are the libraries, Python libraries. There are millions of libraries, thousands of libraries. So now type the matplotlib. So here it is, matplotlib. And this loading shows us the information about matplotlib. However, I don't have internet connection now. So because of this, I cannot download and install this library. But if you press this install package, it's going to be installing it. You see, it's installing. However, on my case, I don't have internet, so it cannot install it, okay? So that's it. And there is green line which appears after successful installation. And if you come across, most of the people come across, you see, come across to this kind of problems. And if you come across, just go to the details and here you can see this error. So you just need to get this one and pass on Google and ask it. So it's going to be answering to your question, this question, okay? So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. I'm so sorry that I didn't have internet to install it and show to you. But anyway, I think you got my point. And if you are using other operating systems like Mac OS or Linux, then you definitely need to go to other Google, for example, to ask and learn how to install Matplotlib. And now I'm going to be importing matplotlib. So import matplotlib. So as you can see, it is loading. And now I can print the version, current version of this matplotlib. Matplotlib dot underscore version underscore. So you see, it is 3.1.3. So I haven't updated it, but this is the version that my Jupyter Notebook is using currently. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you on the next tutorial. Hello, everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to plot simple graphs. 
So let's get started by first importing matplotlib pyplot function. So import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. So this is the common and the most popular shortcut for matplotlib dot plt. So this is the most commonly used matplotlib function to make graphs. So then you can also import numpy because we depend on numpy's data. Import numpy as np. So again, this is the most popular shortcut for numpy. So shift enter. Then we have x input np dot array. So if you don't know how to use numpy, then you definitely need to check out the link I specified for this video. Let's say just a simple one, two, three, four. Then we have y. So in y we have mp dot array. Then ten, twenty, thirty, and forty. We have our data inputs and the function, and now we use plot to show you plt dot plot. And in this one, we're going to be giving input. The first one, as I have shown here, is x. So x, then this x, you see. And then we have y. We're going to be giving this y. So if I give y, then there is a function which is called plt.show. So at the end of this plotting code, you need to show this one. So it's loading. Here it is. This is the just simple graph is one strike line. So here's the x axis, here is the y axis, as you can see corresponding to this data. And now we can also change the color of it. As I have shown you here, here is the one parameter which is color. So let's say for example again plt dot what I'm gonna be using about this data again. So I can use them. And so let's say, for example, again, x and y. However, I also want to add color. Color is equal to r. And again, plt.show. Oh, sorry, here, I think you, need, you shouldn't forget the brackets. So now our line is in red color. And let's, for example, also use another trick, which is you can also skip this part, which is x parameter, or here it's x parameter. Instead, you can also just put y parameter, automatically plot function is going to be putting x parameter. So we can only specify this parameter. So let's use one example here. y points, let's say, np.array. And inside it, let's say 8, 1, 10, 5, and 7. So then, plt dot plot points, and again, plt dot show. So as you can see, we can only show one parameter, which is y function. So according to this y function, we are getting automatic x parameters okay so then we also go deeper with real life applications for example let's say we have days specific days and we are going to be using this this range 0 22 3 so now i am also using celsius see how it was written i don't know Values, let's see. Values is equal to, for example, 25.6, oh, let's see, 27.5, 30 32.8, 33.1. So now we have our data. 
and now we can also visualize it what using matplotlib base this is the first parameter which is x parameter and then we have this parameter which is y parameter which is function so this functions is dependent on this one as you know from mathematics dot show so you see it is showing us this graph what we did here is that we took one month or for example let's say march and in march as you know typically in the first days it will be cold and as the days pass so the temperature also gets warm so here these are the first days of march and it is the temperature is below 25 celsius and as the days pass the temperature is growing by the end of the march the temperature is growing up to 33 or 34 so this is visualization and the making conclusion or the making prediction model okay and visualization helps us to make conclusions and that is why we need matplotlib and let's move into other very simple example which you can feel how matplotlib works so let's say another example is np dot let's say arrange arrange then maybe 11 yeah two. okay then we have y so y we have np dot xp and x so now we can plot it plt dot plot x and y then plt dot show so let's look at it what's happening here so here is our x value which is up to 10. here is our y function which is exponent as you can remember 2 to the power x this is exponent yeah so this is the function so for example you want to apply to this function x values starting from 1 up to 10. so how it looks like in visualization as follows so you can see we are applying 2 here and the function y function is here and 4 and here 8 here 10 here so we applied up to 10 and we got this visualization and this is the y value so if you apply for example 8 it is approximately uh, maybe 2500 but anyway this is how you can visualize your data or the function so this was exponent function in data visualization with matplotlib so in this tutorial we learned how to plot typical simple functions starting from lines up to typical other calculus or mathematical functions so that's it for today and thank you for watching in the next tutorials we're going to be learning a lot more interesting functions that matplotlib offers to us Hello everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to be talking about different types of lines. So we're going to be editing lines in graphs. So first of all, I'm going to be importing NumPy and Matplotlib. Import matplotlib.pyplotsplt and import NumPy as np. Then we can also use y is equal to np dot array for example 3 8 1 10 let's see then we have function so plt dot plot and we have y and interestingly we have function which is line style is equal to dotted dotted and plt dot show so as you can see we have edited our line into dotted one so here this line style is one of the parameters of plot and you can just use this dotted or etc and here is our dotted line so now i can also change this 
dotted one into other one. For example, dotted one, you can also change it into columns. Let's say, you see, it is the same. However, this is symbol, not the English language word. And I can also use other one, dash dot. You can see it is dash and dot. So there are lots of other symbols. For example, just dash. As you can see, this is the line. And if you don't specify the line style, this is the dash, which is default. And now we can also move into other types of parameters. For example, we can also use our color. And if I specify color as, for example, G, which is green, you see, it became green now. So I'm going to be changing to my favorite line style and then green. And again, if you want to use the hash code for coloring, for example, if we use hash for CAF50, this is, I think, green. You see, this is light green. And we can also use another function, which is the width of this line. Line width. And equal to how many? For example, again, maybe 15. Let's see. You see, this is 15. <laughs> so ugly, yeah. And now I can move into more complex way of representing our line. We can also get advanced by plotting two lines or two graphs in one coordinate. Okay, so let's copy this one and put it. Then we have y1, which is equal to np.array is equal to 6, 2, 7, 11. Okay, then I'm going to be removing it and making it green. G. So you can see this is one plot. And now I can also use the second plot, which is copy and plot it. So if I don't specify anything for both of them, for example, just themselves, so you can see in default, it is also specifying different colors to different plots. So there are two plots here, as I mentioned, and none of them is mentioning the specifying the colors or the widths or the type of line. However, by default, Matplotlib is specifying and distinguishing it. So this is how you can do cool functions, cool graphs with Matplotlib. And this is just a starting point of you can do that kind of things. This was about lines and editing and adding parameters to plots. So see you on the next tutorial in which I'm going to be giving you more broad way of other cool tricks that you can use with Matplotlib. See you on the next tutorials. Hello, everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about one of the fundamental parameters of plot function, so which is marker. It plays one of the important roles in specifying the peaks of lines. For example, if you have taken calculus courses in differentiation or integral, you have learned how to specify, how to identify the peaks of the line. So let's get started by specifying marker. Import matplotlib dot p pyplot as plt then import numpy as np so let's get started with giving y points np dot array 3 1 10 then we have plt dot plot y and marker is equal to o and at the end plt dot show so if we plot it you see these are the peak points of this graph so as you remember calculus teaches us these peak points and matplotlib is automatically specifying these peak points for us and now we can also change the symbol of this marker. For example, here there are lots of markers 
and if you know here circle and we can also move to stars let's say for example star you see it's now in star mode and if we specify it into g then it's going to be specifying our peak points in diamond symbol then we can also move into marker size so what should be the size of this marker so ms which is short for marker size and now marker size should be for example 10 you see it's much bigger if you want to make it big then we can also move into marker edge color so what does it do mic which stands for marker edge color so you see it is coloring the edge of these markers and again there is another parameter related to these markers which is marker face color so if i use this one marker face color is equal to again r or for example g green you see it is now coloring the inner side or the face of these markers now let's change it to one of the best ones that i really like for example my favorite one is again circle and uh, which is i can also make it for example 20 then marker edge color is as i specified again g so you see it is in green mode now there is also another shortcut way of specifying this part for example there is another formatting which is marker line color so how do we specify it again i'm gonna be taking this line and let's specify it and remove this ones without using this marker marker edge size and etc i can just tell it as following for example circle and r so what it is going to be doing you see it is specifying the marker with the symbol circle and it is also specifying the line type with these columns and then it is also giving the color for this graph which is red you see so it takes as following parameters marker line and the color in here and here is the style of this again the line types solid dotted dashed dash dotted none so you can use also none this or symbol and at the same time colors are green red blue kind and magenta yellow black and white so there are lots of other colors and i'm not going to be in going into details of all of them However, we can also make another cool thing with these lines, 126, and then we have x is equal to mp.line space. So if you don't know what this line space, you can also go to the link below to know more about numpy, okay? So mp.numpy and mp.py again, and then we have and and int point is equal to true so it is making a graph and with x inputs and now we're going to be making our y function which is two times let's say two times x so again plot plt dot plot x y then we give color color let's say blue then alpha is equal to 1.00 let's say then there is a full function which is fill between and this function is going to be specifying the color or the functions above or below areas like integral and x and y then one color is equal to blue and alpha let's say alpha is equal to 0.1 so this alpha is specifying the color of this blue how much blue color should be applied light 
or dark and this is alpha is specifying it okay so now let's show it so you see it is specifying the above function and if i change this fill in between zero instead of one you see it is changing it in between this line so this is how you can also apply this matplotlib function into integrals and uh, finding the area under the curve and that's it i hope you enjoyed my tutorials on markers and see you on the next tutorials hello everybody in this tutorial i'm going to be talking about legend label title functions so let's get started with importing matplotlib and numpy splt and numpy snp so now i'm going to be making x1 numpy dot array 0 1 2 3 then y1 okay copy fast 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 so this one is y1 this one is x2 this one is y2 now let's change it let's say 3 8 1 10 then we have 6 2 7 11 so now we have data let's plot it plt dot plot x1 y1 x2 y2 so we have now plot and let's show it plt dot show so as you can see this is again the typical similar function that we learned previous tutorial and now i'm gonna be adding new functions to it so let's get started with first copying and then pass it i'm gonna be adding new functions so now there is a function which is called plt dot x label so x label is let's say profit and there is also y level y level is months let's say so we have months versus profit and if i show you what is changing in this versus this graph here profit and months has appeared in this graph so x label and y label are going to be assigning or giving the sign of x and the y coordinate so this is the name of y coordinate and this is the name of x coordinate profit versus months which is cool we have also another function let's go into another one so we have labels now and we can also move into title plt maybe you have guessed it title title let's say monthly profit so you can see this one monthly profit is appearing at the top of this graph so this is the topic this is the title of this graph so you can easily understand from this title what this graph is showing us then we have also another function which is let's copy it which is legend plt dot legend so legend labels let's say for example may then we have april then we have location we are, we are going to be putting this one let's say lower right so you can see this mini graph is appearing in this coordinate and it is telling us the monthly profit for the may with blue line and monthly profit for the april with orange line the legend is specifying which line is which months then we can also make it perfect with adding other parameters let's take this this one then let's move it and i can also add for example marker marker as this one 
So as you can see, it is giving us the peak points so that we can easily identify or visualize it. So this one is also changing. You see, there is marker. So this is what we have learned in this tutorial, like X label, Y label, title, legend. So they are so useful when you want to represent your coordinate or the graph as understandable as possible. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you on the next tutorials. Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about grids in our coordinate system. So let's get started with importing our matplotlib function. See, y is equal to, let's say, 1. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64. Then we have x1 is equal to 1, 16, 30, 42, 55, 68, 77, 88. And x2 is equal to 1, 6, 12, 18, let's say 28. 40, what else? 52, maybe, and 65, yes. So we have our data ready, and we can start plotting it. plt dot plot x1, y, and yellow s, zero. So then we have our, one of the plots is ready. Plot, again, x2, y, g, o. Then we have plot dot legend. Let's say init label is equal to TV and smartphone and location. Where do we want to locate this one? Lower right. Then we have plt dot grid, which is new function in our tutorial. So true, we put legend, plt dot title. So title is, let's say, adds effects, maybe on sales. Then we have x and y labels, plt dot x label is equal to medium. Then plt dot y label is equal to sales sales and at the end we have plt.show function and if i show it no this label and legends sorry i'm having problem sorry i think i forgot this one yes here it is labels don't forget it so now we have our ready function graph and uh, as you can see here the new thing that we previously didn't learn is grids. So grids teach us or helps us to easily identify in which specific particular point is. For example, if we take this marker and it is located in the 40 by slightly over 35, maybe 36 or 37. You see, it is helping us to identify the point in which located. Okay, so then we have also other parameters for grid. So let's copy this one and then just pass it. And we can also fill out these parameters. For example, let's say we have uh, color. Yes, first of all, color is equal to B. So as you know, obviously B stands for blue. So then we have line style. So we have line style of this one. And at the end, we have line width, LV, 0 0.25. So as you can see, it slightly changed from black into blue one is the color, and the line width is still thicker okay, than this one. So this is how you can also make your data as accurate as possible or as visually understandable as possible. So that's it for today. In this tutorial, we learned about grids with its parameters and see you on the next tutorials for more functions. Hello, everybody. 
In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about bar plots, and it is one of the plots that Matplotlib offers to us to visualize data. So let's get started with importing Matplotlib. PLT and then import numpy to use for our data so then we can specify our data in p dot array a then b then c and then finally d and now we're going to be specifying our y array array is equal to let's say again our typical traditional data which is 1 and 10 so at the end we can plot it plt dot instead of plot now i'm gonna be using bar so bar plot is gonna be written as follow so now i can give parameters x and y so at the end plt dot show so as you can see now we have our bar plot so bar plot looks similar to histogram but histogram is another way okay so here it is and we can also apply other parameters like color so now i can also move into other real life data for example let's say x is equal to maybe apples then we have bananas and our y data is uh, let's say 400 and 350 so now i can also plot this one in our bar plot x and y at the end plt dot show function so as you can see this is apple how much apple we have 400 quantity and we have bananas 350 we can also use in this purpose so let's also take this one and interestingly we can also plot this bar plot horizontally so let's do it and only the difference is here age you need to add bar age so if you put it you see it is in horizontal and at the same time as i mentioned above i can also pass it I can also specify the color color is equal to let's say r as you can see now the color has been changed or for example our traditional hash code is 4 csf and 50 so as you can see this is green and now we can also specify the width of our bars okay so width is equal to 0 0.1 so now as you can see it is very thin we can also put maybe 9 for example 9 or 5 for example as you can see it is changing depending on your choice you can also make it horizontal but if we make this one horizontal for example copy horizontal bar h it's going to give us error the reason why it is giving us error is that this shouldn't be now width it should be height okay height and now you can see it is height so whenever you have horizontal bar plot then you can control the height instead of width unlike in vertical bars so again we have other applications for example let's say man man mean is equal to let's say 20 35 30 35 again and then let's say 27 and we have woman woman mean again the data 12 34 20 and 25 let's say specify the group group is equal to np dot range 5 and we can also specify the plot for example we have plot and first our x then we have our y so man mean 
and let's also specify the width which is point maybe 35 then we have color is equal to which one maybe red yeah so then we have also again just copy this one copy and pass so now in the y parameter we can also specify the woman woman means and the same thing is happening however here there is a function which is bottom so in bottom function for bar bar plots serve for top and bottom i'm going to be explaining this in a minute okay means okay let's change it blue we also can specify the plt dot x and y labels x label is equal to let's say scores so we have scores plt dot y label y label is group groups and at the end we have plt dot title is equal to let's say for example scores by group because we are measuring it by group and gender yes gender and plt dot x tick x tick x tick is group and we have another one which is g1 g2 g3 then we have g4 and finally we have g5 oh g5 so then we can also specify the y plt dot y ticks so in y ticks we have np dot range is equal to starting from 0 up to 80 then 10 step and finally we have legend left legend is equal to let's say labels is equal to then we have man and woman and plt dot show what's the problem here i have everything okay maybe this one yes exactly so now as you can see this graph is showing the scored goals by group and gender so what it is telling us is that this blue women and men is red so in the group one women scored more goals than men so how do we determine here is up to 20 goals are scored by men and up to 45 which means 25 scored by women so 25 versus 20 and now women is winning here however in this one women are losing here so this is how we can determine by group in this group there is more men scored goals and by group and by gender we are comparing goals okay so now there are several new functions that we are not clear is so the first one is bottom so bottom means you can represent the two variables bottom up for example we specified here bottom men means because here is men in red color is at the bottom of this bar okay so then we also have x ticks and y ticks so we can also specify the numbers or the labels or the numbers of this x coordinate okay instead of one two three four we specified it by x ticks so x ticks and y ticks we have also specified y ticks with a numpy's arrange starting from 0 up to 80 so here labels x and y labels title legend and etc this is cool and full visualization that you can apply into your machine learning or other programs or algorithms okay so then we also have other real life application for bar plot let's say languages is equal to np dot array and then we have 
different types of programming languages. Let's start with C and C++. It's relative. Then we also have Java, which is also somehow close relative. And our most popular programming language, which is Python. And finally, we have one of the most commonly used programming language, which is PHP. And we also making a survey among students. Let's say, for example, Array. And among that students, 23 of them choose one language. And 70 of them choose another language as their daily using language. And then 29 students again another language. And that's it. So now we can also plot it. Bar and we have languages. Then our students. Students. We have languages and finally we have our function which is show sorry language is not defined lens okay here it is as you can see this is c c plus plus java python and php and what it is telling us is that most commonly used programming language is java because 35 students among total of this number of students have chosen Java as their daily using language. And then Python comes, then C comes. So as you can see, it is somehow bell-shaped, but it's not perfectly bell-shaped. And I think that's it for bar plots. And I hope you enjoyed my tutorial on bar plot and its real applications. And in the next tutorials, we're going to be talking other types of graphs like histogram, pie chart, and etc. And see you in the next tutorials. Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking one of the types of graphs which Matplotlib offers to us. So it is histogram. So let's first of all import Matplotlib. Import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then we have import numpy as np. Then at the end, we can also make our uh, x coordinate random dot normal. So let's say, for example, from 170 up to and 10, then we have 250. So as you can see, we have random x values and we can show it histogram and this is just a simple histogram dot show so this is a histogram and the histogram is going to be describing us the frequency of particular thing for example if we take this highest value it is in between the middle of it is 165 so this is the highest point in which we can see our 60 in the y axis so the frequency is the most important thing in here and now we can also apply several things several parameters for example density is equal to just true so you can see it is changing because we are changing the density and here are some of the other parameters which histogram offers to us. However, I'm not going to be going into details of each of these parameters because there are lots of parameters if you search for plots like histogram, pie chart, and etc. So because of this, you can go here. If you need specific function in histogram, for example, you can come to here and see what this histogram offers to us as parameters. Here are some of detailed explanations of parameters, so you can use them easily. That's it. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. See you in the next tutorial. Hello, everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about pie charts. Now, pie charts are one of the important and interesting functions that Matplotlib offers to us. So, first of all, let's get started with importing. 
Five plot with plot five plot SPLT and then import of a numpy for numpy as NP for our data. Now let's make our Y data array and let's say 35, 25, maybe again 25 and 50. Now let's use our pie chart. So just use pie and it's the function to use pie. So plt.show. So as you can see, this is simple pie chart. There is no label. You cannot understand what this data represents. And now I can also move into more clear method of it. So let's copy this one. So now I can add other parameters. For example, label. Label is equal to apple. Then we have banana. Then we have cherry here. And we can now put other labels. For example, labels is equal to LB. If we do it, now it is appearing in our chart. So your apple is correlating with 35. And our banana and our cherry are correlating with 25. So. And then our lastly pair is correlating with the least amount of data which is 15. So if you want to do something it needs to correlate with each other in pie chart. So pay attention to this one too okay. So now we can also add other type of function which is for example is uh, start angle. So it is going to be changing the angle. For example we can put 90. You see it changed it. And if I do it 180, you see, it is again rounding it. So this is the changing the position of your data. And now we can also add other parts. For example, let's add other function, which is cool. And I also like it. XP is equal to 0 0.20. Zero, zero, and this is a coordinate. And we can also do x load. This is one of the parameters that pie chart offers to us. Xp. So if I do it, you see it is exploding this part, which is apple's part from the whole pie. And we can also use the 3D format. For example, I can also add. 3D, which is shadow. Shadow is equal to true. So if I do this one, you see it is making it in 3D format. 3D format is also very beautiful when it comes to pie charts. And at the end, we can also put legends. So let's copy this one. We can also put legend there. Yeah. Then now I can remove this explode functions and etc. and put plt.legend. In legend, there are several functions as you know. So I can also put, for example, title. Title is for fruits. Where do you want? Location is upper, let's say, left. If I do it, you see it's appearing here. And there is a question. Logic question is that we have two representation of this pie chart. The first one is banana, cherry, pear, and apple are straightforward written in front of their related pie. However, we also are representing these pies with legend. This part, the blue one is apple, the orange one is banana, cherry, and pear. So there are two ways of identifying this pie chart. Why do we need these two ways of? If we have one of them, for example, banana. Oh yes, orange one is banana. So I got it. But this is problem. So this is not the perfect way of representing your real data analysis. So now my question is, 
can you remove this banana and cherry and pie apples and just leave this one one way of identifying or representing your data so how do you do this one think about it and this is exercise remove this apple pear and this one only leave this one to represent your data i hope you paused this and for the time and practiced it and now i'm going to be moving into let's remove this one into practice so let's remove our label this part so how do we remove it? remove it from this label and if i do it you see it is removing it totally removed we don't have anything how do you identify now what does this pie chart represent to us now i'm going to be putting labels remember when we learned legend function we had this labels parameter and in labels now we can also specify our label oh sorry I made mistake here. So you see, labels is equal to LB. LB is this one. So we removed from pi, from pi itself, and we put this representation labels into our legend part. So that's it. This is the exercise that you should have done it. Now you can also go into real life data. For example, again, I have languages. Languages is equal to np dot array then we have c c plus plus then we have again java then we have python and at the end we have php we have our ready languages and students that we made survey with so np dot array how many students liked which programming language or commonly used so 30 let's say 5 again then 29 then 12. And now we can apply our pie chart so let's say plt.py in it we can just use our students then labels is equal to languages there is one cool function which pie chart offers to us which is representing each pies for example these slice and slices in percentages so we can also use it to help others to understand it better so for example percentage 1.2 app in percentage and this is how you can do you can also change this 1.1 into 1.2 and etc so oh sorry i didn't use plt.show so as you can see this is how you can represent your real data so here we are representing how many students use constantly these popular programming languages for example here javascript is going to be used by 30.70 percent of students which is top students are going to be using java so then another top programming language that is commonly used among these surveyed students is python so it is by 25 percent of students is going to be used and then we have uh, c and uh, c plus plus php and etc so that's it and i hope you enjoyed my tutorial on pie charts and it is one of the best representation with matplotlib and see you on the next tutorial with another matplotlib functions hello everybody in this tutorial i'm going to be talking about scatter plots and scatter plots play important role in machine learning graphs. So it is commonly used in machine learning and deep learning algorithms. And now I'm gonna be importing matplotlib and numpy. So import matplotlib.pyplot.splt. Then import numpy as np. Then we're gonna be creating our x and y data 5 7 8 7 2 17 2 9 let's say uh, oh, sorry 4 11 and what 12 9 again maybe again 6 
that we didn't use. And now, why? NP dot array. So let's put somehow higher numbers, values like 99, 86, maybe 87. What else? 111, let's say. And again, 86, 103, then 87, again, 94. What else can we? Maybe even 70, 78. Then we have 77. Then what else can we? 85 that we didn't use. Again, let's say 86. So now I can plot them. PLT dot scatter. So this scatter word is the function for scatter plot. So x and y then our function plt dot show. Oh sorry, let's add 88 here. Yes, here it is, and you can see this is a plot, and it is in the negative side, as you can see. And now we can also change some parameters or so we'll add other values. For example, let's copy it and pass it. Copy, pass, and now I can also change its data too. For example, x again, x is equal to np dot array, and in this one I put other values. Like 2, 2, 8, 1, 15, 8, 12, 9, 7, 3, 11, 4, 7, 14, 12. Then we have value value, which is np.array. And it is equal to 100. 105. Then we have 84. Then we have 105, then we have 90, then we have 99, then we have 90, so 95, then 94, then we have 179, let's say. What else left? 112, random numbers it should be, totally. So 91, 80, then let's say 85. So that's it. And now I can plot this one again. So, I do plot for this one and this one. As you can see, it is separating these dots. Here you can see this is the first one, which is in the blue one. And the, here is the second data, which is plotted in orange one. So, this is how matplotlib scatter plot is working. And now, we can also change the color. For example, we can add color to it. Let's copy, copy. So I have passed it, and now we can add color. How do we add different colors? Let's play with it. And uh, I have, for example, colors is equal to numpy.array. And in this one, I'm going to be putting R, then we have G, B, then we have Y, which is yellow. We have then what? P, let's say B, again black, yeah? Let's say black. There are two blues here if you put B. Then we have orange. Orange. Then we have what? Purple. Pur purple. How it was written spelled? I don't know. Then we have big. Then brown. Brown. Maybe lastly gray. So I think that's it, or let's put separate colors for all of them. Yeah. Then what, which type of color? Let's say magenta. Magenta. Then we can specify now for our parameter. So it is, is equal to colors. And if I show it, oh, sorry. So it should be red, I think, green, blue, yellow, pink. So if I do it, as you can see, this is how it looks like.
every dot is represented with different color. So this is how you can also make your scatter plot interesting. And now there is also another type of coloring and it is as follows. So let's copy this one, pass it. So in colors, instead of this yellow, bro, and etc., I'm going to be putting numbers. How do we do it? For example, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, let's say 45, 50, 55, then 60, then 70, because it should correlate with our data. 90, then 100. And uh, here is we have a sign. And now there is one cool coloring parameter, which is C map color map and from that color map you can also use some very this names and if I do it you see there is this another color and it is changing according to the parameter and here is how we can identify how it is changing for example color bar so it is going to be showing us this color bar and now we can also go deeper with other types of parameters. For example, let's copy this one, pass it. Then we have also size. We can make it bigger or smaller. I mean, these dots. So some of them may become bigger, some of them may become smaller. So we can identify it from here. Instead of colors, I'm going to be using here size. Size is equal to mp array i'm going to be changing this one instead of this one i'm going to be putting random numbers 50 then 200 um, let's say 500 even then 1000 and the gain 60 90 10 300 then 600 then 900 maybe let's say 800 because we have already then 75 what else can we do now now we can change it instead of colors i'm going to be putting size which is s s is equal to size so if i do it then as you can see it is showing us these dots in different sizes so i can remove this color bar plot so without bar plot as you can see it is in different sizes so now we can also use another parameter here which is the darkness should it be light or dark so how do we control it can you remember it is alpha as we controlled in bar plots with alpha we can also control it with scatter plot so if i do it as you can see it is in lighter mode now we can also play around with it and make random numbers let's say random numbers x is equal to np dot random rand int with integers so up to 100 then the size should be let's say 100 oh. then what else now y np dot random random dot rand int and we have 100 then we have size is equal to what Again, 100. Same, but it is totally random. Colors is equal to, interestingly, this is the interesting part of our, uh, this example, which is rent int is equal to, again, 100. The same thing, size is equal to 100. So now we can also use for, let's say, size. Let's copy it just pass it however here we need to multiply by 10 you know then we change the size the name of the data now we can plot it plt dot scatter so x and y then parameters first of all i'm going to be specifying colors then i'm going to be specifying size and at the end alpha is equal to 0 0.5 then we have cmap cmap function or color function 
and there is another name for this C map which is Nipai. I think it was Nipai special. I think Spe Speculum. So plt dot show is equal to this one, and uh, here you can see how beautiful this one is. Yeah.